uh, three tenths plus five eighths plus one fifth. The most important thing is that you can come up with a common denominator. Now, hold up, guys. Put your hands up because you just got to listen to me just for a minute. I do appreciate your enthusiasm, but you just got to listen for a second. I want to make sure Miss Pliego's class understands what we understand now. And if I say to add those, why can't I add three tenths and five eighths plus one fifth? Uh -huh. Justice. Um, because the denominator is different. But what, what is significant about the denominators being different? Ooh. Why is that even a rule? Why is that a rule? Because, yes, it does have so to be the same denominator, eight, but... If I take over eight... Well, no, 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 wait a minute, I want to, I want to, I'm, you're, you're, you're good. You're, you, you understand what we're saying, but there's a simple word that I want... Like, this comes, you don't know what's one, it's like, you lose one, it's Yes, you do, but why do they have to be the same? Right now, they are all what? They're all different. We say they're different sizes. We say they're different sizes. So yesterday, for example, you can look at our uh, problem yesterday that we started out with. All right, I want everybody to take a quick look at this just for a quick second. Yesterday, we did one-sixth plus one-third. All right, and what we discovered yesterday, or maybe not discovered, but we reinforced, is the reason why we can't add them together because the sizes are what? They're not the same. All right, if you take a third of a piece of pizza and a fourth of a piece of pizza, those sizes can't be added because they're not the same size. All right, in order to add things together, the things have to be the same size. Everybody with me on this? All right. So in order to add three tenths, five eighths, and one fifth, they have to be the same size. And that size is 40. Perfect. 40. Now, the recommendation is that you write 40, 40, and 40. Now, what did you multiply the first fraction by, Bradley? You multiply by 4, so you're supposed to put a times 4 and a times 4, so that would be what? 12 fortieths. Carly, what would you multiply the second equation by? 5. So you multiply by 5, by 5, and so you would have 25. And the last equation, you would multiply Aiden by? 8. By 8. Multiply by 8, multiply by 8. That would give you 8 fortieths, and now it's all addition, so we can just do what? Add them, and when we add them, we ended up with? Um, 41 over 40. 40 what? 1 over 40. Wait, look, do me a favor. Look up on the board real quick. Mental math, 8 plus 12 is? 8 plus 12 is 20. And then 20 plus 25. There you go. But I know how to change it. You have to change it mixed yeah mixed fraction but now everybody double check that and make sure you're comfortable with being 45 over 40 is everybody okay with that and then we have to reduce hold up we have to reduce what are we going to reduce it to one no 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 reduce uh you're probably correct but i want you to divide by the first number yes let's reduce it first so i'm going to divide by five so that becomes nine Nine eighths. Now, from a long time ago, nine eighths. So nine eighths is the same as somebody over here. What's nine eighths the same as? You remember? How many times does eight go into nine? Once. With how many left over? One. So the answer is one and one eighth. All right, so if you know one and one eighth, or you got that right, patch stuff on the back, you're in pretty good shape. All right, yes, sir. No, 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 don't worry about doing the next one right now. What, Carly? Um, oh, hold on. What? Um, I didn't say 40 at first, and I was able to just do it for the just one more. Yes, okay. Now, listen, guys. Um, again, I appreciate, hey, listen. Come on now, guys, listen, there's more people in here. All right, we've got to stay focused. We've got a lot of work to do today. All right, 
So again, that was a review of yesterday's. Anybody feeling like they're just not real sure what we're talking about here? Because today it's a little bit harder. All right. So what I want everybody to do now is um, I want you to take a look at section 3-9. All right. And we're going to do right now questions 2 through 9 together. We're going to do questions 2 through 9 together. All right. And, uh, well, actually, we're doing the odds today. I almost forgot. We're doing the odds. So I want everybody to write down question number 3. What section is it? It's spot 3-9. I'll tell you in a second. All right. We're just going to kind of break them down. I know, I know. Section 3-9. All right, we're doing page 192. Now, um, actually, it's not one, but we're starting with three. All right, we're starting with three. Three through nine, 11 through 37. Odds. All right, now, listen, guys, guys, we're wasting time, wasting time. It's 11. All right, so here we go. Now I'm looking at question number three. All right. Now, again, everybody write that down. Two and seven eighths plus three and three fourths. Now, just let me go through a couple of them, guys. I, I so appreciate you guys wanting to help. But I, I want to explain the first uh, couple to make sure everybody's good. All right. The most important thing, again, is that whenever you're adding or subtracting fractions, you always have to have common denominators. All right. So in this case, the common denominator is obviously eight. All right. So now... The next thing I used to tell my kids is I think personally it's easier when you stack them on top of each other. I just think that's easier. All right. So that would be my recommendation. Now, we already said somebody had a common denominator of 8, which means this fraction doesn't have to change at all. The first fraction is already in 8. But the second fraction I have to multiply by 2. two. All right. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that. So I'm going to multiply by 2, multiply by 2. So that fraction becomes what? 5 and 6 eighths. We're at 5 and 6 eighths. Now all I'm asking you, no, I'm asking you not to interrupt. At some point when you don't understand something, you raise your hand. Um, wait, you're supposed to multiply the... Wait, how did it become... Thank you. That was a three. Thank you. All right. So now, everybody's with me? Sorry about that. All right. Now what we're doing is we're going to add them now. We can add them because they have what? Common denominators. All right. So when we add them now, two plus three is what? Five. So I'm adding the whole numbers together. And then I'm adding the fractions. So I end up with... 13 eighths. Perfect so far. So I have 5 and 13 eighths. Now put your hands down, guys. Listen, I don't want to be interrupted. I, if you don't understand something, that's the only reason you got your hand up. All right, I want to do the first couple, and then you guys, I'm going to let you help me. All right, but I always have to show you first. All right. Now, 13 eighths is a problem because that's considered an improper fraction. All right. So everybody should be able to tell me that that is the same as 6 and 5 eighths. Now, how did I get 6? Because oh. when I take 13 eighths, that's the same as what? 1 and 5 eighths. And then you add the 5 with the 1, and that makes it 6. Now, does anybody have any questions with how I got 1 and 5 eighths? Thomas, you good? Aiden, what? Well, because in, in math, what we say is you can't have a mixed fraction and an improper fraction. And 13 over 8 is considered an improper fraction. And because there's a whole number in front, that makes it a whole number and an improper fraction. So we don't leave fractions that way. Well, because what's 13 divided by 8? Well. One, and how many left over? Five. That's where one and five-eighths is the same as thirteen-eighths. 
which meant that there was one whole and five eighths. And so now when you take the one whole and add it to the five holes, you get what? Six. Is that better now? Yeah. Carly, what? Yeah, that's what we did. That's what we did. Eight into 13 is one. All right. Now, again, I want everybody to take a look now at uh, question number five. Let's everybody write down question number five. All right, five and one half plus two and one fourth. I appreciate it, guys. Remember, I'm going to do three or four of these, and then I'm going to let you guys walk me through it. All right? So everybody should look at that pretty much and say I, the common denominator is four. Everybody with me? So when you're writing this again, my uh, what I think is the best is for you to say five and one half plus two and one fourth. Multiply by 2, so this becomes 5 and 2 fourths plus 2 and 1 fourth. Is everybody happy with that so far? And this one should have been before the other one because there's no reducing on this one. Does everybody agree? So this would be what? 7, seven and 3 fourths. Is everybody pretty happy with that? Now, look, I try to tell all my kids, look, it's better to ask me a question now than it is to wait until we're seven or eight, nine problems in and you tell me you don't know what you're doing. All right? Everybody okay with that? All right? So let's take a look now. Um, I'm going to pull seven down. Now we're just doing some what here, guys? It looks like we're doing some subtraction. So let's see what we got for the subtraction. All right? Now, again, I like to write it when they're stacked on top of each other, 8 and 1 sixth minus 2 and 5 sixths. And this one is, put a big star by this one. All right? Most people cannot do this. Most people cannot do this. And most people can't do this because they have to do what? Um, you have to reduce to each You mean you have to borrow. borrow. Thank you. You have to borrow. That's very smart. See, he's looking at this going, wow. I'm supposed to subtract. First of all, it's a little bit easier. And the answer would be what? Yes, because it already has common what? It already has common denominators. Now listen to me, guys. Nothing is more important than fractions. All right, so again, I really want you to concentrate and tell me if you're not sure about something. All right, I'm asking you to subtract 8 and 1 6 minus 2 and 5 6. And can I do 1 minus 5? No. no. So I have to do what? Borrow. And when you borrow, you cross out the 8, and you make it a what? And you make it a 7. Now, when you borrow, the mistake most people make is they just make this like 11. And that is not the correct answer. What do I make that 1 instead of making it 11? Does anybody remember? You add the 6 from the double, so then it becomes Yes, actually, that is absolutely correct. All right, when you borrow, all right, when you're borrowing, what you're doing is you're adding one plus one sixth. You're adding one plus one sixth. All right, and when you add one to one sixth, we get what? One and one sixth. One and one sixth. Very good. Which is the same as, the same as seven over six. Because you can do what? Six times one plus one, right? Now, that took some time. Or you can remember, I can always just do what to the numerator and denominator? Switch them. You can just add them. Thank you. You can just add them together. That's okay. You can add them together. So now I cross out the one and I make it a what? Seven. Stay with me now. That's really as hard as the subtraction gets. Unless, of course, you have to get a common denominator. All right? But the borrowing is what's the hard part for kids. So now, what's 7 minus 2? 7 minus 2 today is 5, and then 7 minus 5. That's what he was talking about. So now I have 
5 and 2, 6. But of course, we can reduce 5 and 2, 6 to 5 and 1 third. 5 and 1 third. All right? So again, now that leaves us with, uh, or we've got three problems done now. All right, and I've always tried to encourage everybody, listen carefully. If you're having trouble, now's the time to speak up because it's getting a little bit harder every time. Yes? You said that you had to cross out the 8. Because you're borrowing. But you're borrowing 1. But 8's over, the 8's bigger than 2, so why is it not? Well, because we can't subtract out 1, 6 minus 5, 6. Do you want me to show you that, or are you okay with that? All right, good, because I can draw a picture for that. All right, here we go. So let's take a look at nine. Gavin, turn around. Just come on, man. All right, so number nine, here we go. All right, now the problem with number nine is I need to get what? Yeah, we have to get common denominators. So here we go, guys. Super important, 7 and 5 eighths minus 3 and 2 fifths. Can anybody tell if we have to borrow on this one or not? You should be able to look no, at that and say if we're going to borrow. No. The reason is no, because 5 eighths is bigger than 2 fifths. You know that, that's good. All right, that was smart. All right, now let's try to collectively, as a class, Try to tell me what the common denominator is. Everybody, what is it? 40. Is everybody okay with it being 40? Yeah, yeah. If you don't know it's 40, you got to let me know. Common denominator is 40. So what I try to teach my kids is put a 40 here, put a 40 here. Now, what am I multiplying 8 by to get 40? 5. Multiply by 5. 5 times 5 is? 25. So I have 25 fortieths. And then what do I multiply 5 by to get 40? 8. eight. eight. So everybody's doing times 8 times 8. 16 fortieths. What? Um, I just think this is the easiest way. If, you, if you're smart enough to go horizontal, I'm totally okay with that. But again, I just I think this way is the easiest way. Yes, sir. Well, hold up a second. Now we're subtracting. All right, now we're subtracting. Now, to me, you should start over on this side, right? And we see that 25 minus 16, I don't have to borrow. So what's 25 minus 16? 9 fortieths. And then 7 minus 3? 4. 4. All right? So 4 and 9 fortieths is the correct answer. Girls, how y'all doing? Good? Good? Yes, sir. What is 25 minus 16? There you go. You see what I'm saying? So I did the numerators here, and I subtracted the numerators. Okay, don't be sorry. That's a good question. I want you to ask me a question. Somebody else? Somebody else? All right, so that was question 9. So now let's take a look at 11. All right. Can I reduce that? How would I reduce that? Tell me what you're thinking. Three. three doesn't go into 40, though. That's all right. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's okay. All right. I'd rather you ask. All right. Even if it's a careless mistake, I'd rather you ask. All right. Now, um, I think I want everybody to write down um, question number uh, 11. All right. But this... I think should be a good mental math problem. All right, so everybody take a look. Do we have common denominators already? Yeah, so please pay attention now. This is how you should be thinking about it. Put your hand down, put your hand down. I want everybody to understand that if I have one fourth and I add three fourths, that makes what? One whole, four fourths, you're right. It makes four fourths, all right, which is one whole. All right, so then you're saying what? What's 6 plus 8 plus that one whole makes it 15? Now, listen, I want everybody to write that down. I want everybody to write down 6 and 1 fourth plus 8 and 3 fourths. And I need for you to be able to tell me 
that yes, you understand exactly why that's 15. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So sit down now and pay attention. You've been up and down out of your seat. I know you got, well, come on, let's go. Shh. Don't worry about the other problems right now. Listen to me. I'm trying to make this make sense to you. Ready, Aiden? What's one fourth plus three fourths? And what is four fourths? One whole. Six plus eight. Plus one whole. There's your answer, buddy. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what you're saying. Good for you. Also on that one, if you do it up and down, one fourth is not bigger than three fourths, so when you have to bar. But listen to me. Very good question. Very good question. You're only going to have to borrow when it's subtraction. Don't worry, Carla. You hear me? That's what I want you to do, girl. Come on. That's the way you get smarter. All right, ask questions. Ask questions if you're not sure. Thomas, are you with me? Yes. Um, could we do the same thing with subtraction with this? No, I don't want to make a generalization about subtraction. Every problem is a little bit different. Every problem is a little bit different. All right? So let's take a look at 13. Now, um, this one's a little bit easier because we have a what? Um, same denominator. Yeah, they have the same denominator. So let's go ahead. I'm going to write that down. Everybody write it down for me. All right. Now, again, um, somebody asked me a good question. This time right here, guys, because we have a, a common denominator, do I really have to stack them on top of each other? It, I want you to be smart enough to look at that and just say, well, we have a common denominator. I'm adding. It's super easy. That's what I want you to tell me. It's super easy. Because it's super easy, we're going to say that 3 plus 1 is what? 4. four. 5 plus 5. So we're going to have 4 and 10 6. Now, of course, in my opinion, we should go ahead and just reduce 10 6 to what? 2 thirds. 2 and 5 thirds. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're, no, no, no. You guys gave me lots of mistakes there. So here we go. Shh, no, we're not. Bradley, just listen for a second. Just listen for a second now. All right, I want you to reduce the fraction. It's easier to reduce the fraction first. So I would divide both by 2, and that would give me 4 and 5 thirds. Everybody with me on that so far? Even though, Bradley, you were right, it doesn't matter which way you do it. All right, I think it's easier to reduce first. Now, how many times does 3 go into 5? Once. So that gives me a grand total then of? Five, right? And how many was left over? Five and two thirds. Justice, are you good with that? Yes. I Boys in the back, you okay with that? I'm okay. I, I, I'm Girls on the left, you guys all right with that? Yes. Boys on the right side, you guys okay? Look, there's no excuse. No excuse. Everybody okay? Yeah, Girls in the front. Yes. What's the matter, boys? Tell me. No, he's, he's going to ask me a question. What? Where's the problem? I want to help you. Shh, girls, quiet. I mean it. I'm helping. Shh. Divided by two. Yes. You don't always do it by two. You don't always do it by two. Yeah. Hey, girls, I mean it. Yeah. Like, it just so happens that 10 and 6 are both divisible by 2. But if it was like, like 15 and 6, I would divide by 3. Could you do 10 minus 6 is 4, and 4 equals 6. Yeah, That's well, 5 and 4 is 6. 5 and 4 is 6. Which is the same as 5 and 2 thirds, which is what Bradley was doing. But I tried to tell him, to me, it's easier to reduce first. It's always better to reduce the numbers, in my opinion. All right? All right, so that was number 13. Let's take a look at 15. All right, 15 should be easy. So I'm going to write it up. I'm going to, uh, you can copy it. And then I want everybody to try it.
All right, here we go. Let me give you a minute. All right, let me give you a minute. Put your hand down. Girls, come on. Thomas, what's the common denominator? I don't care. I want to know what the common denominator is. Thomas, we have three tenths and one half, buddy. Listen, Thomas. All right. I need these to be the same, right? So what can I multiply the second equation by? The 20 is, an, is a common denominator, guys. 20 is a common denominator, but it's the least. What would be better than 20, Thomas? Shh. What can I multiply 2 by? Help him, Bradley. There you go. Exactly. You see that, Thomas? All right. Come on, remember, Thomas, now you're working on not being upset. You hear me? Don't be upset. You're learning like everybody else. So I'm multiplying by 5. So I want everybody to put a 5 here and everybody to put a 5 there. All right. So now I have 2 and 3 tenths plus 4 and 5 tenths. Layton. Okay, when you add, so you would do... And what else? Uh, then you Good. Six and eight tenths is exactly accurate. Then, you then I reduce it. Six and four fifths. Six and four fifths. I got two fifths. Listen, it's okay. It listen to me. It's it's okay, but oh, okay, now you yeah. check and make sure you're in good shape. What? Yes, sir. Um, Shh. I, I think I looked at it. Can you go back to the question? I thought I. I think it five because like four is five ten. It's Thomas. Do you understand what I'm saying now? See, you, you, everybody has questions. All right, and he's. I'm proud of him because he's asking me a question. All right. So and same thing, Aiden. You're tying your shoe now. You're up and down. Come on, buddy. Focus with me. You're not focused today. After you finally made a really good grade, that's the way it should be. That's why I put on your paper. You should be making a good grade every time because you finally concentrated for a week. Now you're not concentrating today. Justice. Um, so I'm kind of confused how you got a five on the second one. Well, because I'm trying to get a common denominator. Do you agree with me? Uh, and I'm looking at this 10. Do you agree with that? And I'm trying to say, hey, can I make that a 10? How can I make that a 10? You with me now, right? Okay. So hopefully you're feeling better. Now what I'm going to do is, to make sure you're in good shape, I'm going to go down to the hard problem. All right, I'm going to see, see who knows and who doesn't know. So I'm going to start at the bottom now, all right, and I'm going to work my way back up. So we're going to start on question 37, all right? And 37 is a nice one. All right, so I want everybody to give that a good shot. And I would say if you can get 37, 35, 33, then you know what you're doing. And honestly, I would just prefer that you get to work. That's what I want you to do. All right? Yes, sir, what do I get? Um, uh, you do, um, What's the common denominator? Um, Is it yes, it is. Thank you so much. 24. So here we go, guys, with 24 now. All right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put 4 and something over 24 plus 1 and something over 24 plus 3 and something over 24. Now, is everybody with me on this? Yeah. 
Hold on a minute. All right. What do I have to do? Go ahead. I'm going to let you continue. Um, I think you take the what do I ha I have to convert? Oh yeah. Um, so what do I multiply that fraction by? Um, you do um three times eight. Yes, sir. Eight. Very nice. So I want everybody to put a times eight there, yeah. and then we put a times eight there, yeah. and then I get a what? Sixteen. Yes, I do. So okay. that's sixteen over twenty-four. Hold up, I'm going to ask one of the girls now. <laughs> what do I do on the second fraction? Um, put your hand up. Seven eighths. What do I have to multiply that by? You're awesome, girl. Times three, times three, so I get what? Yes, ma'am. Very nice. All right. You're up. What do I multiply three and a half by? Now, remember, I want this to be 24. What do I multiply two by to get 24? 12. Good. Don't be shy, kiddo. Talk loud. 12 times 12. So that ends up being? And so what's the numerator? The one on top. Nope. Because you're multiplying. On top. Yes, you know that. That's all right. Perfect so far. All right. Pretty happy with that. Now what's the next step? That's right. You add the whole numbers. What do I get when I add the whole numbers? He's good. I don't care. No, add the whole numbers for me. Yes, 8. All right, now we're going to add the fraction, and the 24 is going to stay on the bottom. Aiden, what's the... Is that right, 61? That seems a little, it seems a little high. It would, it, okay, we're going to go with 49. All right, double check your math, Aiden. And that's okay, double check your math. It's all right, it's all right, it doesn't matter, we're good. So is everybody okay with 8 and 49 over 24? Yes. Now, hold up, I need some help here. Go, what do I do next? Shh, hold up a second. Hold on, just wait a second. You guys are interrupting me now. All right, I asked him to go for the next step. We already discussed whether it was 49 or not. I've had some agreement on 49. Is that correct or incorrect? Okay, well, let's do it real quick. 21 plus 16 is 37. Oh, wait. Oh, I... That's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. That's what I'm trying to teach everybody. It's okay to make a mistake, right, Thomas? It's no problem. That's why you're in this class. Make mistakes. Figure it out. All right, now, continue. 49 gives me 24 two times. There you go. So it's 2 and 124, then 2 plus 8 is 10. The answer is 10 and 124. Very good. So we have 10 and 124. Yes, sir. I don't care. Go to the bathroom. Shh. Here we go. 10 and 124. Now, again, listen. That's a good problem. That's the hardest it's going to get tonight. All right, hopefully you found it was pretty easy. All right, but now I'm going to go back and I'm going to check out 35. So here we go. 35. All right, quiet, still be quiet. And everybody's trying to get this one. Bless you. Bless you. All right, here's 35. A little bit trickier because the denominator is a little bigger, but that shouldn't be an issue. That should not be an issue. Miss Pliego, what do you think it is? Um, the denominator. No, no, look up on the board, kiddo. Don't be sorry. What do you think it is, a common denominator with 15 and 10? Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's clear. Listen, so let's say we don't know. Instead of instead of just put your hand down so we can show. What I like to try to show my kids is it's just the multiples. So count by 15. 15 and then what? Because 10 doesn't go into 15, so 15 and then 
15 plus 15 is 30. Does 10 go into 30? Shh. See what I'm saying? That's how simple that was. All right. So the common denominator now we found out was 30. Guys, still quiet now. The common denominator is 30. The common denominator is 30. Could it be more than 30? Yes. You could have said 60 even. Now we don't have to reduce it. All right. But now you may not have to reduce it as much. So here we go. The common denominator is 60. So now I want you to put one. Gavin, you're in. What are you doing? Interrupting. Look up on the board, Gavin. One and something over 30 plus two and something over 30. You honestly can't see that, Gavin? It's not that much. I was talking about 30. Okay. All right. Three times three is 48. Here we go. Now, yes, sir, what do I have to do? There you go. Multiplying by 2, multiplying by 2 is 14. And the other equation? Good job, guys. I think we're in actually pretty good shape. So now, hold up. I'm going to go into somebody else. I want you to add them. All right. So we're going to start with 3 and 35 over 30. Now, honestly, I like to reduce first. What would I be dividing by, Jack? Um, you would be dividing by 5. Yes, I would be dividing by 5. So that would give me what? 3 and? 7, 6. 7, 6. All right. And close this out for me. Okay, so. The final answer, just tell me. 4 and 6. Yes, nice work. Four and one six. I feel pretty good about that. Pretty pretty good. Is everybody agreeing with me? Okay, tell me now. Hold up. Very important. Mr. Mant, good for you. I'm proud of you. Tell me what you're having problem an issue with. I thought you mean seven. Listen to me. I'm gonna tell you something. Remember, I would say almost hundred percent of the time, if I write it on my board, it's correct. So we're not gonna to try to correct mine, we're trying to correct yours. So what you have to do is what I'm trying to teach all my kids is as you look at my problem, you find out where you have a different number, and then you ask me, like, how did you get 21? Or how did you get 14? Or how did you get 30? All right, that's what I'm interested in. Where are we different? Oh, I see what I did. I that's exactly. Listen, you made a great revelation today, right? Your objective, this is what I'm trying to tell everybody, all right? I'm looking up here on the board, and I'm looking at my paper, and if my paper is different from what the board is, then change your paper. That's what you have to do. All right? The next thing I want to say is when you see that you're different, try to figure out why it's different. You're much smarter if you correct yourself than if I have to constantly correct you. All right, because if I have to constantly correct you, that just means you're not listening to me. All right, so please, fractions, by far, the most important thing we do. You have to be experts at fractions. All right, so now, let's go ahead. I want to jump to a subtraction problem. All right, subtraction problem is 33, perfect. So I want everybody to take a look at 33. And let's see what we can do with 33. This is a really nice problem. It involves let's take a look at it. All right. I want first and foremost common denominator. No. I got somebody in the front row. Go ahead. You're good. 18. I'm going to let you work me through the whole problem. Okay. So hold on a second. It's going to be one and, and yes, 1 and 14 eighteenths because we're multiplying by 2. Perfect. And then we're subtracting out 17 over 18. Beautiful. Miles, I, I can't do it. Now, can I go 14 minus 17? So let her talk, please. 
So since I can't do 14 minus 17, I have to do what? I have to borrow. And I'm going to borrow from the? Nope. Nope. I'm going to borrow far from the 1. That's correct. You're borrowing from the whole number. So what I want you to do now is, on your paper, I want you to cross out the 1. And if I cross out the 1, I would make let her answer. I would make it a what? Yes, zero, right? Because there's only one, all right? Now, do you remember the rule? What am I doing? When I borrow, what do I have to do to the numerator and denominator? That's all right. Look, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. So be careful. I'm going to scroll back. I'm going to scroll back until I get to here. And I'm looking at my notes. Yeah, there you go. That's why you take good notes, and that's why you don't just, uh, you, you take really good notes, all right? So it doesn't interrupt, or it doesn't, uh, come on, guys, look, we, we, we can get through the distraction. It's not really that big of a deal. Everybody's heard a cell phone go off before. It's really not a big deal. All I'm doing is trying to teach, all right? All right. I got right. I haven't even done the problem. I haven't even done the problem. Here we go. So here we go. We're back. Now we're going to add those. And when I add those, all right, here we go, guys. Listen, the homework is to finish up those odds. All right. And the final answer would have been 15 18, which reduces to 5 6. 5 over 6. Yes. All right. Great job. You're subtracting, not adding. Subtracting. 